Hey everyone, this is uh, Algebra 1, uh, Unit 7. So this unit we're looking at, um, at quadratic equations. Uh, our primary focus is going to be on first understanding the properties of them, right? What do they look like? Um, how do they behave? And, uh, and you know, what are some of the features of them? Um, and then the other part we're going to look at is quadratic uh, equations, quadratic expressions, um, and factoring. Okay, so how to unmultiply them, and we're going to use that um, un unmultiplying that factoring later uh, to help us better understand some of the properties of um, these parabolas. Okay, so um, so our goal today is to identify the solutions of a quadratic equation, and we're going to do that based on its graph. So we're going to take a look at the graph and identify the solutions on there. Um, so our essential question is where the solutions appear on a graph. there okay so um, so the quadratic equation and quadratic function a quadratic expression uh, we learned in the last unit talking about polynomials that a quadratic is anything that has a, uh, a polynomial that has a degree 2 so it'll have a squared in it somewhere an x squared or a squared or some variable that's squared um, and when we look at the graphs of quadratic equations, um, those graphs are called parabolas. So they always have this sort of uh, sort of U-shaped, right? Kind of goes down and goes back up. It continues to go out, right? It never like curves back in or goes straight up. It always continues to go out on the left and on the right. Um, okay, so it's called a parabola. Sometimes they can open up. Sometimes they can open down. Um, you will see on occasion. Uh, you know, sometimes they'll open to the side. Those aren't technically parabolas. Those are um, another kind of function called a, a, a radical function. Um, but it'll, it'll, it'll have that shape where it either opens up or opens down. Um, it has some key features on there. It's called a vertex and an axis of symmetry, and we'll talk about those next. So we kind of break down a uh, parabola, right? We have um, the x-intercepts, okay, most graphs have some form of x-intercept, right, where it touches the x-axis. Uh, remember that this is always where the y-coordinate is zero, or where that uh, equation is equal to zero. So sometimes they'll, they'll say find the zeros, sometimes they'll say find the solution, sometimes they'll say find the x-intercepts, sometimes they'll even say find the roots. Um, those all mean the same thing. It's just where are the x-intercepts, where does that graph um, cross the x-axis? Uh, y-intercept, um, so that's just, again, where the graph crosses the y-axis. Uh, that's where the x-coordinate is zero. A lot of times in parabolas, this is often like the starting point. Um, so uh, in the application of quadratics, um, you can use quadratics to approximate the motion of um, things that are like affected by gravity or, um, or even the area of, um, you know, of quadrilaterals. Uh, and that x-intercept, I'm sorry, the y-intercept, um, and a lot of times it will represent the start of that path of motion. So when we're talking about, uh, for example, a baseball flying through the air or a rocket flying through the air or, um, you know, something thrown off a, a, you know, off a ledge or something like that, um, that x, sorry, that y-intercept will be that starting point of that. We saw that yesterday in the Desmos activity um, when the guy was shooting the basketball, where he let go of that basketball, that would have been our, um, our y-intercept. Uh, and then the things that are kind of unique to parabolas is that they have a vertex, and that vertex is that point where it changes direction. Okay, we talked um, when we we're talking about you know describing polynomials, we would call that a maximum or a minimum um, in, a, in a parabola or quadratic. There's only one of those, and so they call that the vertex. Um, and then the other thing about um, parabolas is that they're symmetrical, so from left to right, they have a symmetry, and that symmetry goes right through the vertex. So the left side of the graph is exactly the same shape and uh, as the as the right side of the graph and that axis of symmetry right represents that kind of fold line if i imagine this is a piece of paper and i folded it right along that line um, these points right on either side of that axis of symmetry would line up and they would touch each other right? that axis of symmetry 
that axis of symmetry, like I said, it goes right through the vertex. Right? When we talk about the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry is always an equation of a line. Okay? And it's a vertical line. It always has the form x equals some number. And that number is going to be the x coordinate of the vertex. All right, and we can use that to our advantage. Sometimes we may be able to figure out where the axis of symmetry is, um, and we can use that to help us figure out the y coordinate of the vertex. We also know that, you know, because of that symmetry, that the x intercepts, right, are equally spaced, right, on either side uh, of that. So if I look at the distance between uh, these two x-intercepts, so from negative 1 to 3 is 4, so half of that would be 2. So if I start at negative 1 and I go over 2, I'm going to sit right on that axis of symmetry. And likewise, if I start at 3 and I go to the left 2, and I start on that right side and go left, I'm going to end up on that axis of symmetry. Right? So it's symmetrical, it's right down the middle. Okay, so you'll see some questions like this. They'll ask you, um, you know, about uh, finding the solutions. Uh, and now the solutions, again, are where the, that crosses the x-axis, right, where that y-coordinate is zero. So um, in this case, uh, let's see here. So we have a solution right here. My computer's a little slow right there. We have another solution right there. Okay. We don't know exactly where those are, um, but we do know that the um, that the y coordinate is zero, and so we can just estimate those. And so that's about negative one, negative two. Um, this would be negative three. That's maybe you know two, negative two and a quarter. So I would say that's negative two point two five zero. Okay, and and again, that's an estimate. Um, get that other bracket on there. That's an estimate. All right. And the same thing here, I can kind of estimate that. I think that that is um, one, maybe one and a quarter. And so I would say that that is um, 1.25, zero. And again, I'm just, I'm estimating those. Now, if I knew the equation for this, right, I could put it on, you know, Desmos or something like that. And I can actually look those up. It'll tell me exactly where those are. But a lot of times, the best we can do with a graph is just kind of estimate. So that's what we did here. Okay, so how many solutions does this have? Again, the solutions are where it crosses the x-axis. So there are two solutions here. Okay, one solution um, is going to be here, maybe at, uh, it looks like approximately negative one-half, zero. And then uh, the other one is over here, maybe one, two, three and a half. Uh, so three and a half. So again, I'm kind of guessing on those. It's an estimate, um, but it's a you know it's a pretty pretty good uh, estimate. The other thing I can notice here is I look at my line of symmetry. My line of symmetry right goes right here through four. And so if I look at the distance, right, from the line of symmetry out to here, this is one, two, three and a half. And if I go, um, sorry, this way from right here, if I go ahead, it's one, two, three, four and a half. And if I look the other way, one, two, three, four and a half. So I think that that's probably about right. Okay. I'm sorry, that shouldn't be three and a half. That should be uh, four and a half. Sorry, that's five, six, seven, eight and a half. Sorry, this is eight and a half. Mess that up. That should be eight and a half. Yeah. Okay, so five, six, seven, eight and a half. And if I look at the total distance there, right, that total distance between them um, is nine. And so half of nine is four and a half. And so if I go four and a half in, it should be right there, right, halfway in between there is four and a half. Okay, so I'm pretty confident that my guesses are, are close. How many solutions does this quadratic have? Now, again, the solutions are where it crosses the x-axis. And so when I look at the solutions on this parabola, um, the solution, the solution, there's only one of them, right? And it's right there. It happens to be right on the vertex. So this is an example where this parabola only has one solution. 
And we'll find that when we look at parabolas, right, that there are only three possibilities. It can have two solutions, which is kind of most common. Uh, and then um, sometimes there'll be uh, a parabola where the vertex is right on the x-axis, so that has one solution. And then we have some, some solutions where are some parabolas where it doesn't touch the x-axis at all, and there will be no solution. Okay, so this solution right here is located at zero, zero. So there's just one of them. And then, um, so here's an example, right, of a polynomial, uh, a quadratic, and we look down here, and it doesn't actually touch the x-axis. So here's the x-axis right here. That parabola does not touch that. And so this would have no solution, right? Oops, sorry. So this would have no solution. So we would say, um, you know, something like there are no solutions. Um, and what that means is that that parabola does not touch the x-axis. Uh, sometimes when uh, you're doing the assignments, they'll ask you to input the coordinates of the solutions. If they don't exist, we would write um, D and E does not exist. All right, and then some other um, problems will ask you to identify, to identify some of the other features on there. So here it's asking for the axis of symmetry. And so the axis of symmetry is going to go right through the vertex. And so let's see if I do this right. It's going to go right through here. And so it looks like here at negative 1. Right? So I can draw that axis of symmetry right through there. And, you know, if I'm clever about this, I would probably want to put a different line type on that, uh, maybe make it a different color or something, uh, just to kind of make it stand out. Right? Uh, so what's the equation of this axis of symmetry? Um, well, if I look at this axis of symmetry, it passes right here through the point where x is equal to negative 1. Okay. And so that's going to be my equation. My equation is going to be x equals negative 1. Uh, when we talk about an axis of symmetry, we're describing a line. And that line has an equation. So we can't just say um, the axis of symmetry is negative 1. Uh, it's where the x value is negative 1. All right. So we're describing that line. So it's a little bit of a technicality there, but that's what we want to do. And then the, um, the vertex on that. Uh, so the vertex on that is going to be right here where x is negative 1, my y value here is going to be um, negative 5. Okay, so 2, 3, 4, 5, so negative 5. Um, so that's going to be my vertex. So my vertex is going to be at where x is negative 1 and y is negative 5. So there's my vertex. So if I can identify that axis of symmetry, I can just follow that down right, uh, and see where that is. If I know what that axis of symmetry is, right, if I can calculate that somehow or look it up somehow, um, I can use that to help me calculate that, um, that, uh, that y value. Right? Notice that if I put negative 1 into this equation, I would get negative 1 squared would be 1. Negative 1 times 2 would be negative 2 and uh, plus negative 4. So I'd have 1 minus 2 minus 4. That would give me negative 5. So I can see that that equation actually works out. And so um, if I didn't have the graph and all I had was this equation, right, I knew that axis of symmetry was negative 1, I could calculate that, that vertex. Okay, I want to take um, a few minutes and look at some of the homework assignment. Um, so, uh, so let's take a look at some of the problems on here. I'm going to bring up uh, Desmos here uh, just to have it up here. Um, some of these, uh, you know, the graphs will be on here, and so um, I can just look at them. Some of them, um, you know, I'll have to graph them and actually look them up. So, uh, so here's an example of a problem, the graph. They give you the equation here, so x squared plus 4x, all right? Um, notice that it's x squared plus 4x plus 0, okay? So... Um, that C value, right? That last value on there uh, gives us some information there. But anyway, uh, so they want us to solve the equation. 
okay? They want us to solve the equation. Now, by saying what are the x-intercepts or, you know, what are the roots or what are the zeros or, you know, but that's, that's what, in effect, they're asking us to do. So anytime they want to know where is that function equal to zero, right, when they say solve it, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for the x-intercepts. They're looking for the values of x that make that zero. So if I look on my graph right here, I can see, well, here when x is negative 4, uh, the y value is zero. And here where x is zero, the y value is zero. And I can verify those by putting those numbers in here and checking them. Um, but here are my two solutions, okay? So the solutions here are at negative 4 and 0. I'm just going to put those in with a comma between them. I don't want brackets around those. Okay, brackets around those would mean the point negative 4, 0. Um, they just want to know the x values. All right. Okay, so you have a number of problems like that. Um, you know, what are the solutions? So the solution would be right there. So the x value would be 0. There's only one solution to this one. Here they want to know the solutions again, right? So, you know, here and here. So type those in. Um, here they're again, they're asking for the solutions. Now here, right here, you don't know exactly what those are because they're kind of in between those grid lines, okay? So what you're going to do is, in this case, you're going to estimate them. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually take this, and I'm just going to just quickly copy and paste this, and it doesn't paste exactly right, but um, it's close enough. Okay, and so I'm going to paste this in here, and um, and if I look uh, closely at this, right, it'll tell me what those solutions are. And so I can see it's, it's about negative 5.5, but it's not exactly negative 5.5, okay? And the same thing here. Right. So I can use um, Desmos to help me get more exact answers. Uh, and we can look at some of the other properties here too as well, right? We can see the y-intercept here is at 0, 8, where the x-axis, where the x-coordinate is 0. I can see the vertex here is at negative 2, 12. And that means my axis of symmetry is going to be um, where x is equal to uh, this point right here, negative 2, where x is negative 2. x equals negative 2 um, is going to be oops, my axis of symmetry. Okay, but they're only asking for the solutions, and so um, I would just look those solutions up and type those in. Okay. Now, if you get close, it should um, it should allow you to do that. So if I put in negative 5.5 and uh, positive 1.5, I think that might be close enough. Um, we'll see here. No, it says that's wrong. So I actually need to go and look those up. Okay, so I need to grab so 5.46. Negative 5.46 and uh, positive 1.46. Positive 1.46. And I can take it out to three you know, decimal places if I want. It's probably better to do that. Um, and so uh, let's see what did I do on the next. Let's work plus eight. Oh. Okay. Uh, let me step back here. Uh, I, I kind of jumped the gun here, right? I didn't actually read the problem carefully. They don't want to know the solutions. They want to know where the g of x is equal to 4. Okay, so this is a different problem. Um, so, let's see. I'm going to have to get a similar question here because I, I, I messed that up. Here they want to know where h of x is equal to 10. All right, so where the function is equal to 10. Now, where it says h of x, that's the y value. Okay, they're looking for the value of the function where it's 10. So if I come over here to 10, right, I come over here to 10, and I come over straight over here and see where it hits that graph right there, and then I come down and look, I can see that that x value is going to be 3. So when x is 3, my y value is 10, and that's what they're asking here, where's my y value is 10? So it's going to be at where x is 3. And if I um, put this over here, Let's try this again. And here, right, this would be one. Okay, but here what they want to know 
is where is the y value equal to 10? And so I can come over here and I can just click right there. Um, so I can kind of get on there. If I get right on there, I can see that that's 310. The other thing that I can do here is I can um, turn this into a table of values. All right. I can uh, turn this into a table of values. x1 plus 2x plus 13 and they want to know where h of x is 10 oh there's two values so it's negative 1 and at 3 and so if I continue that out here to 3 I can find those two values so it's going to be 3 and negative 1 all right so right here where h of x is equal to 10 so I look over here there's one and there's another. So here they are right here in the table of values, negative one and a three. So negative one and three. Okay, so, you know, I, I struggled a little bit with that last problem um, because one, I didn't read it very carefully and then number two, when I looked for this, I just looked for one solution, right? I came out here as I excited to see that I found one solution, uh, but I didn't pay attention to see that I, um, that I got both solutions. And so it was only through making that table of values and kind of looking at that a little closer that I was able to kind of figure out my mistake, all right? So, you know, that making mistakes and that, you know, um, not reading the problem carefully and kind of going too fast through it. You see that everybody does that, right? I do that all the time. So, um, yeah, that's, that's just the way that it goes. Uh, that's the reason we kind of think through this. We check our answers, right? If it doesn't work, we go back and try to understand what happened. Okay, so here's the next problem. We'll take our time and read through this one. Uh, a person standing close to the edge of the top of a 20 foot building um, throws a ball vertically upward. Uh, the quadratic function models the, the ball's height above the ground, um, and t is the second after it was thrown. Okay, so they give us this equation right here. This is a, a function of gravity, right? And so um, if we think about, you know, what that ball is going to do, it's going to go up for a while, so that distance is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then eventually gravity is going to grab it. It's going to slow it down. And then eventually gravity is going to pull it back down to the ground. All right. So we're looking at distance above the ground, right? It's going to go up for a while and then it's going to come right back down. Now, this is not necessarily the path of the ball, but it represents the height of the ball. And so, um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this equation in here. Copy that. Nice thing to hear. I need to change that to a squared. Okay, and so you know, instead of t, I'm going to use x. Um, so there's my x there. Okay, and I get an x here. All right. And so I can see the, the path of that ball. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this uh, axis of symmetry here. And then you notice that, right, this is really like a tall, skinny graph. It's kind of hard to see. Um, so there are some things that I can do uh, to, to help that, okay? One of those is I can just simply um, change the, uh, the axis here. So from the, the x-axis, I want to see actually the values from, from 0, right, to, uh, let's say, 10. And the y-values, I want to go from uh, 0 to, let's say, uh, 50. And I'm kind of guessing there on that 50, I should probably look out here and see it's more and closer to um, 120. So let's change that from zero and 120. Okay, so that gives me a little better view of what's going on there. Okay. And really, what, what I care about here, right, this, this x-axis here represents time, okay, so time. So 
this is time going along here. Um, so right here is the start. Okay, so he's at the top of a 20 foot building. So I see my Y intercept here is at 0 20. Okay, so he's 20 feet off the ground when he throws that ball straight up into the air. And so this is where that comes from. You notice that 20 in the equation there, that plus 20, that gives me my Y intercept. All right. Um, now, they want to know the maximum height of the ball. So the maximum height of the ball is going to be there at the vertex. That's going to be the maximum height. And it looks like that's 110.25 feet. So 110.25 feet. And they want to know how many seconds until that ball hits the ground again. So here it's going up at 110 feet. It turns around and starts coming back down. And then it hits the ground, right? It hits the ground, not the top of the building. It hits the ground. Um, when t is five. So that's five seconds. Five seconds there. Now, the points to the left of this y-intercept and below the x-axis really don't make any sense here um, because this would represent negative time, right? And this would rec rec represent that ball um, uh, continuing to just pass right through the earth and not stop. So those don't really make sense. Uh, so when we talk about like the domain of this, right, the domain of this would really be from zero to five seconds, right? That's really the, the, the area of that, that graph that we're using. Um, and then from the range, the range part of that, right, the Y values, the lowest it could be would be where it hit the ground would be five and the tallest would be, you know, 110.25. So we can talk about the, do the range of that function as well. Okay, and if we want to know how many seconds it takes to get to the top, right? Well, that's half, right? And we start here, and so it's going to be right through this axis of symmetry, and so that's 2.375. It's not half of 5. It's not 2.5 because it started up above the ground here, all right? So that's why it's not exactly 2.5. All right, let's look at some other questions here. So here we have, um, here we have a graph. Uh, they want to know P of negative 6. So P of negative six. So if I look down here at negative six, right? Sorry, they want to know where P of X is equal to negative six. They want to know the Y value is negative six. And so I can look on this graph here. I can come over here. There's going to be two of them here at negative four and over here at positive four. Then my vertex is right here on the Y axis, right? So it's symmetrical about that. And so negative four and positive four. So negative four and uh, positive four. And I guess I forgot to submit that. Okay, so here's another one. Here's NASA launching a, rack, a rocket. Uh, T equals um, zero seconds. This is the height, again, uh, above sea level. It's in meters. Um, and so, so here it is. And so um, they're asking you, you know, similar questions. Uh, assuming the rocket will splash down in the ocean, uh, what time does that splash down? Okay, so we look again and see where that graph goes up. It comes back down and where it hits the ground, right? Where it hits the ocean, um, that's that time there, that X value is going to be that. Okay, and they want to know how high above. And so it's a similar sort of question, right, as to the baseball one. Okay, so that's really, hopefully this is, a, you know, this assignment would be pretty straightforward. Um, don't make the same mistakes that I did. And, you know, it's tempting for me to go back and like re-record and, you know, take those mistakes out and stuff. But, you know, the mistakes happen, right? And mistakes are where we learn. So don't get bothered by the fact that you make mistakes. In fact, you should be encouraged by that. That means that, you know, it's helping you to focus. It's helping you to figure out, you know, your process is helping you to figure out that you need to slow down maybe and read those questions a little more carefully. Um, drawing a picture always helps. Making a graph of it always helps. Go back and checking your answer always helps. All right. So those are those problem solving strategies and those, you know, those those tools that we have to make sure that we're doing things right. Those that checking is really important. All right. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. So please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.